Civil War soldiers didn't fight every single day. They weren't on the march every single day. They were in camp for extended periods of time, especially during the winter. Each year, thousands of reenactors and spectators gather on the wooded land where the Battle of Olusti, Florida's only significant Civil War battle, was fought. Although neither Confederate nor Union forces ever pitched tents on this actual spot, these modern-day soldiers seek to relive the Civil War experience here, including some of the rigors of camp life in February. Last night, you know, it was freezing, and even though we had a heater, you know, it was still freezing in the tent, so, and to think, they didn't have none of that. They didn't have a heater, so, you know, they just had to rough it out. You get a chance to enjoy the beauty of nature, but it's pretty extreme at times. You get to freeze, or we're dying in this wool. It's 100% wool, and it's heavy. The whole reason why the battlefield is preserved today is to remember those relatively brief hours of really intense fighting that occurred here at Alusty. But the much more common experience for Civil War soldiers on both sides would have been camp life. It would have been time spent cooking, mending uniforms, just killing time in a lot of ways. They spent a lot of time in camp. They tried to make their camps as comfortable as possible. They were concerned about getting good food. They wrote letters home. They played games. They did things to pass the time and to fight off boredom which would have been the much more common experience of many Civil War soldiers than fighting for the, for the bulk of their time. So it's that boredom of camp life and overcoming it that was one of the major challenges for many Civil War soldiers. Civil War soldiers were by and large a literate fighting force who spent a lot of their time in camp writing letters. They spent a lot of time reading letters, they read each other's letters, they read letters from home, they read newspapers, anything to kind of keep that connection with home. This is great for historians because what it means is we had highly literate soldiers who were constantly writing and describing what they saw. And because there wasn't any kind of censorship among uh, Civil War armies, uh, we have those letters today and we're able to reconstruct the events of the Civil War through those letters. They were incredibly important at the time because it allowed Civil War soldiers to stay connected with loved ones, family and friends. It's incredibly important now because it allows historians to go back and reconstruct their lives. Women were not allowed in military camp, and the only way they were allowed in military camp is if they were a laundress. A laundress in a Union camp had to have a certificate of good character from Army headquarters and be married to or mother of one of the soldiers. Her pay was deducted from the soldiers' wages. So we had to make our own soap. We had to take care of our own barrels and make sure they were cured and not leaking. But camp life could also be unhealthy. In many camps, poor nutrition, exposure, and lack of hygiene and sanitation fostered the spread of disease. These are 19th century Americans, and in the 19th century, America was still a very rural place. And so you didn't have many people that had been around other people. And so once you get people together in a relatively small space and living in these cramped quarters, you're going to have disease. And in fact, more people died from disease than they did from bullets or bayonets. But however settled camp life became, there was always a time to move as soldiers were marched to a new location to fight or to wait for action. When we think about Civil War armies on the move, we often use shorthand. So General Robert E. Lee moved here, Ulysses S. Grant moved there. But one thing that we have to keep in mind is that moving a Civil War army was like moving a small community. We're talking about thousands of people, uh, and you're talking about feeding them, clothing them. Uh, these were almost like small cities that were on the move. And it's why it took so long for these armies to move uh, across the countryside. But when you're on campaign, camp life was almost non-existent because what would happen is where you slept tonight, you're probably never going to be again as you moved on the next day. And because the soldiers, most of them, were marching, they carried less and less gear, including shelter halves, to the point where the soldiers would go along and at night when it came time, and no matter what kind of weather,
they just threw their gum blankets on the ground, threw their wool blankets, got down, threw wool blankets over them, another gum blanket on top, and that's where they spent the night. And that's basically their camp. It got to the point where even a brigade was lucky if it had one wagon accompanying them. And see, the wagons were usually in the rear, which meant that sometimes the wagons didn't catch up, and so the men slept out in the cold. It's just amazing to be in the soldiers, to, 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 to relive it as they lived it, and to see how they, the hardships they went through, not only in battle, but trying to just to survive day to day before the battle. Like last night when it was really cold, and uh, gives you a whole new perspective on uh, the soldiers' lives outside of the battle.